I grew up playing Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 64 and it became my favorite game of all time. Years later I still consider it to be the best game that I've ever played. So as you might guess I still replay it every once in a while, but the problem is the hardware. I love the Nintendo 64, it is very nostalgic for me, but it just aged very poorly. At a resolution of 240p and even worse, a not always stable 20fps, it just doesn't play as well as I remember it as a kid. I have played too many more advanced consoles since I was a child and the experience is just not comparable anymore. Now, truth be told, the game has been released in many other ways for other consoles. I even made a video called the best way to play Ocarina of Time where I compared all the different releases and decided which one was the best way to play. In that video I concluded that the Ship of Arcanian port is the best way to play so far. Now what is the Ship of Arcanian port? Let's check it out. First I will need to give credits to the Zelda Reverse Engineering team or Zelda RET. This team did a great job of reverse engineering Ocarina of Time and finishing it at the end of 2021. Besides that, they are hard at work at reverse engineering other Zelda games, which is something I look forward to as a reverse engineered game can always lead to a PC port. Now that's where the Ship of Arcanian port comes into play. A team called Harbor Masters created the Ship of Arcanian port based on the reverse engineered code, essentially making the game natively playable on the PC. And now it has even been ported to Linux, Mac OS, Wii U and the Switch. Now you might be wondering why? Why invest all this time in reverse engineering a game and making it playable on these platforms instead of just using an emulator? Well great question. Having a native port gives you much more flexibility in how much you can modify and improve the game and also just preserving the game completely. Now this is footage of the port running at its full glory. A higher FPS count, widescreen, updated models and textures. Now that you know what the Ship of Arcanian port is, I will show you how to set it up on your own system. First things first, you will need a compatible ROM file. In the description you will find a link to what ROMs are supported for the port. The website is called ship.equipment. On the website you can drag and drop your ROM file and check if your ROM is compatible to use for the PC port. At the moment of recording, the only ROMs that are compatible are European ROMs. You will need this ROM file of the game in order to extract all the copyrighted files that would be illegal to share online like music, models and textures. Requiring this makes the PC port somewhat legal. So if you don't have a European ROM file, you will need to extract your own, but how do you do this? Well, one way is to get an N64 card dumper, but the chance that you already have one laying around is probably quite low and it's a hassle just to buy a dumper for this port. Besides that, you can also extract a ROM file from the Wii U's virtual console release, but that shot has been shut down, so you can't legally do this anymore unless you already own it on your system. The easiest method would be to rip the GameCube release of Ocarina of Time. You can get either the Zelda Collector's Edition or the Wind Waker Limited Edition, which has a separate Ocarina of Time disc. This one would be better because it also includes Master Quest and it is, for as far as I know, the only way you will get a legal copy of the Master Quest ROM. The disc image can be ripped through a GameCube running Swiss or a modded Wii using homebrew application called CleanRip. Now that you have the ISO image ripped to your PC, you can follow the instructions on the Ship of Arcanian website with how to extract the N64 ROM out of that game's disc image. Once that you have your ROM file, use this website to check if it's compatible and if it is, you have a legal copy that you can use. Disclaimer, I don't condone downloading this ROM file online illegally. Everything I'm showing here is for educational purposes and should be done with your own ROM files. Now you can go to the Ship of Arcanian GitHub and download the latest version of the port for the platform that you would like. I will quickly go over each platform and show you how to install it using the compatible ROM file you just legally got. For Windows download the compressed file from GitHub. Extract this file into an empty folder and open soh.exe. It will ask you if you want to generate an OTR, say yes. Then press yes again and select the ROM file on your PC. After waiting a little bit, it should be complete. Now in the case that you have a master request ROM as well, you can go and select that one too. Now open soh.exe and the PC port should start running.
For Linux, I am using an Ubuntu machine. I download the Linux release from the GitHub and extract it. Put the ROM file inside the same folder. Now open the folder in a terminal. Enter schmat plus x soh.app image to make it an executable. Now run soh.app image. As you can see, you will be redirected to a website to install Fuse. Follow the instructions and enter the commands from the website. Now run soh.app image again and generate an OTR file. Now you will have a working, running Ship of Arcanian port. On macOS, download the port from GitHub. Open a DMG file and copy the SOH app to applications. Go to your apps and open SOH. Select the ROM file on your Mac. Enter a master request ROM if you have one. Wait a few seconds and Ocarina of Time will start up on your Mac. Now the next two supported platforms are the Switch and the Wii U. You will need to first generate an OTR file on your PC in order to play it on your console. For the Switch, your system needs to be modded. If that's the case, download the latest release on GitHub and extract it. Create a folder called SOH and unzip the download inside the folder and also insert the OTR file you created on your PC. On your Switch SD card, put the SOH folder you created inside of the Switch folder. I am using an FTP server to transfer the files over. And that's it, you can now launch the application on your Switch. This is a great way to play this port on a portable machine. Download the file on the GitHub for the Wii U. On your Wii U's SD card, go to the apps and create an SOH folder here. Extract the downloaded file here. Then add the OTR file you created on your PC here as well. Now on your Wii U, you will find the Ship of Arcanian port inside the Homebrew channel. You have successfully installed SOH on your Wii U. You will notice that the controller isn't working. That is because you have to set it up first. Select the minus button on your gamepad, go to settings and set up your controller. Now select your gamepad as your controller and you're ready to go. So now you have the game running, but how are you gonna play the game? Ocarina of Time was released on Nintendo 64, so it was designed to be played on a controller like this one. Note the C buttons and the one thumbstick and the two action buttons here, and the Z button on the back. One thing you can do is by one of these controllers. Uh, you can use this on a PC or a Switch and it's just a Nintendo 64 controller that you can use with Bluetooth and that way you can just map all the buttons like they used to be and have a very authentic experience. But what if you don't want to buy that controller just to play this port? Well, you can use any controller that you have access to. If you are going to be playing on the Wii U, you can use a Wii U Pro controller or a Wii U gamepad. Same thing with a Switch, you can always use a Pro controller or just the Joy-Cons. This is an 8-bit Doe controller that I love to use. You can use this on the Switch, you can use this on the PC, um, and it's a very comfortable, great controller that also has gyro aiming. Now, if you're going to be playing on a computer, you're probably going to be using an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. I personally prefer the PlayStation controllers because of the gyro capabilities. Now, clearly there's a lot of differences between these controllers, so how are you going to map these and have a good experience? Well, it all comes down to personal preference. These are the settings that I like to use. The right thumbstick will be used for free cam, and the D-pad will be used for buttons and playing the ocarina. Then besides that, you will have enough buttons to use for the C buttons to use your items on as well. But we're not going to be using these buttons to play the ocarina. We will always use the D-pad to play the ocarina. A and B buttons will be X and square, 
and that's probably the most comfortable way to be playing this game on the PC. Now we are ready to play, but what are the built-in enhancements inside the PC port that make the game so much better compared to playing it on the Nintendo 64? Let's check it out. So on computers you press F1 to open this menu at the top, on consoles you would have to press the minus button. Because it's running natively on my computer, I can just change the resolution to whatever I want. In theory, if my computer was hooked up to a 8K TV, I could just scale this game up to 8K. Now by pressing the F1 button, we can go here to settings. And here we have audio settings, which is pretty self-explanatory. Here we have full control over all the audio inside of the game. In controller, you do the obvious, you do the controller mapping. We also have additional controller options. In Ocarina of Controls, we have Play with D-Pad and Play with Camera Stick, which will make the game much more enjoyable. Inside of Camera Options, we have a few options like Free Cam. Right now, I have it set it up so that my right stick is my camera control. So as you can see, Free Cam will allow you to have full control over your camera. This will give your game a more modern feel. Here we also have D-Pad Options. D-pad as equipped items is definitely recommended by me. This essentially gives you four extra item slots. Uh, D-pad support for in text boxes is also what I recommend using. But because you use these, you don't want to use the D-pad support on pause screen because you will be using the D-pad to put items on your D-pad. So you don't want to use your D-pad to navigate as well. Now those are the control options. Now we can go to the graphics options. And here we can change the internal resolution and anti-aliasing. But this one is more interesting, the FPS counter. As you can see, the game is running at 20 FPS and my monitor is 144 FPS. By pressing match refresh rate, you will change the FPS to whatever your monitor is. Mine is 144 FPS and I can see an immediate change. The game looks way smoother right now. There is no reason to not use this. The jitter fix should also be put to the same FPS. Here we can also change the language if we want to and accessibility like text to speech and disabling the idle camera recentering. Now we can go to the fun stuff. Here we have a preset. There is a description for each preset, but I will be going over some of the more important enhancements right now. Personally, I think text speed is one of the more annoying things about Ocarina of Time and being able to put it to 5x is just a huge help. Skip text is even cooler, you can just hold the B button and it will skip text dialogues. Uh, for someone who has played Ocarina of Time way too many times, this is a huge, huge improvement. No Forced Navi is also a really cool one for if you have played the game a lot of times and No Skultula Freeze is awesome as well. Um, if you're new to the game, I wouldn't disable Forced Navi. Most of these options are very self-explanatory. Remember, save location is also a really cool one. You won't be teleported back to your house as a child or to the Temple of Time as an adult. It will remember where you saved and place you back at the last entrance you went through. In the game, you also have a bunny hood and the Majora's Mask give you more speed. And you can enable the same features here as well, which is really cool in my opinion. In difficulty options, you have some damage multipliers that you can increase, as well as change some of the game's behaviors. Minimal in reduce clutter, you have a lot of self-explanatory options, but as well as minimal UI. Minimal UI will essentially get rid of your UI buttons and make it look a little bit cleaner. But personally, I don't really like that. The visual stone of agony should also be enabled if you're not using a controller that supports rumble. Assignable tunics and boots is also a cool option to enable, especially if you're going through the water temple or the shadow temple. If you're going to the fixes, you might as well just enable everything. The only one I wouldn't do is remove power crouch tab. Restoration is however you want it. You have the authentic logo screen. If I reset the game, here it says Nintendo 64 instead of Ship of Arcanian. Another cool one is Red Ganon Blood. Here in extra modes, we have a few extra things we can enable, like Mirrored World, Crowd Control, which is multiplayer, uh, Enemy Randomizer, and a few other interesting modes. In general, I think it's just the easiest to go to Enhanced and apply Preset. And that'll just enable a bunch. That will pretty much enable the more important settings that you would want to have enabled. Here in Enhancements, we also have Cosmetics Editor. 
Here we can change a bunch of things like color scheme for the buttons to be GameCube or N64. Besides that, we could also just completely make them different. As you can see, when I press randomize all, you can see what you can really change and it's really cool and customizable. You also have a reset all button to put everything back like it was before. Here in cheats, we have cheats obviously, you can have infinite health, money and items and whatever. No clip allows you to walk through walls, which might be a little bit glitchy, so use at your own precaution. Yeah, I think I fucked up already, so let's change age and okay, I'm back. By enabling climb everything, you will be able to climb everything just like in Breath of the Wild. You have a bunch of other cheats, hookshot everything and hookshot reach, which are self-explanatory moon job by pressing the L button. A super ton tunic, which pretty much means that you don't need to use a specific tunic anywhere. Um, timeless equipment, meaning you can use any item no matter what age you are. You can freeze timers, use unrestricted items. There's just you, the time sync, which syncs the in-game time with the time on your PC. The beta quest is essentially just a game shark cheat that allows you to go through worlds and explore a little bit of the beta worlds that are still inside of the code. Normally this is just inside of the cutscene but now we can just walk around here. Drops don't despawn and fireproof deku shield. We just have a bunch of stuff here. We also have a debug mode here as you can see. There's a bunch of stuff we can do here. Now last but not least I would like to show you random. Here we have a bunch of randomizer settings you can go through. And this is also self-explanatory. This pretty much randomizes the entire game and makes it a little bit more interesting for people who know all the glitches and have played the game way too many times. So as you can see, there's a bunch of features built into the PC port at the beginning. But what if you want more? Thanks to modders, we can have a bunch of extra things in there. First, I'm going to show you the texture packs and next I will show you some mods that you can use. After running the ship of Arcanian port at least once, you will get this mods folder. Inside here you will insert all the OTR files or the mod files. All the available mods can be found on the Discord or on Game Banana. At the moment of recording you can choose between two texture packs, OOT Reloaded and the 3DS Experience. To install one of these texture packs you simply download it, unzip it and put it inside of the mods folder. Now that it's installed, you can simply open the game, go to enhancements, graphics and use alternate assets. Besides that, you can also just simply press the tab button on your keyboard. And that's it, now you've installed it manually. Besides installing it manually, you can also use something called a shiploader, which is a mod managing tool for the Ship of Arcanian PC port. To use it, you simply download the exe file and open it. Then you point the mod manager to your Ship of Arcanian PC port folder where the game is installed. And now it's ready to use. Now you can select mods that you want to use. And before launching the game you can check and uncheck these mods individually. Now obviously you can do much more than just texture packs. This is the Twilight Princess Link mod, which changes the model and also equipment models. This mod uses a Breath of the Wild model for Link. Or maybe you want to play as Master Chief. There's also a mod that uses the models from Super Smash Bros. Melee. You also get your fair share of goofy mods like Ocarina of Time is Ocarina of Time and Monkey Ball Boulders. Besides the mods that I just showed you, there's much more out there. These mods can be installed on any version, so also on the Switch and the Wii U. And I think that's where I'm gonna wrap my video up. I tried to cover as much as I could in one video, and I hope it was useful. I would like to give a huge shout out to anyone who worked on this PC port, because it's truly amazing. And I would like to thank you for watching my video.